Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture and today we'll discuss the only pending remaining emergency in pediatric hematology that is febrile neutropenia. Rest all the emergencies of hematological origin I have discussed in the lecture of uh, approach to hematological emergencies in children. So the only pending one is febrile neutropenia. Now, what is febrile neutropenia? So, it is the most common. Febrile neutropenia is the most common hemato-oncological emergency in children. So, this is important that the most common hemato-oncological emergencies in children is, uh, you know, this. Febrile neutropenia. Now you have to know that, you know, it is sometimes associated with just fever. It may present with just fever. And, uh, you know, then when you investigate the patient, you can see that the patient is suffering from neutropenia. Now, what is the definition of febrile neutropenia? So, first thing is a single temperature of more than 101 degree Fahrenheit, which you know estimates to around 38.3 degree Celsius, or more than one hour of 104 degree Fahrenheit fever, which turns out to be around 38 degree Celsius. Okay, so either of these two if present with absolute neutrophilic count less than 500 uh, cells per mm cube or expected to fall, expected to fall less than 500 within 48 hours. So right now it is 1000, but it is falling with such a speed that in 48 hours you are expecting the absolute neutrophil count to go less than 500. So that is the definition of febrile neutropenia. Now there are two terminologies. One is profound neutropenia, profound neutropenia. So it is called profound if ANC is less than 100. And it is called prolonged. If it lasts for more than or equal to seven days. So you have to remember this that prolonged neutropenia is prolonged prefebrile neutropenia is that if it lasts for more than seven days. And profound neutropenia is that if ENC falls less than 100 per millimeter cube. Now all the patients of febrile neutropenia are considered as pediatric emergencies because they may deteriorate very, 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 very fast. And there are some clues to diagnose the cause. So, one of the causes is enterocolitis. So, in enterocolitis, what might occur? Abdominal distension. Feed intolerance, bilious vomiting. So, if this is present, then you may say that okay, the patient has enterocolitis. Okay, respiratory as uh, if, if you may say that there is pneumonia, if there is again respiratory distress, crepitations heard. And pneumocystis pneumonia may be suspect if, suspected if there are bilateral basal crepitations and associated uh, with immunodeficiency uh, of any form, then you might say that pneumocystis carini may also cause the pneumonia. There might be focus present, uh, present in urine, there might be focus present in stool, there might be focus present in skin. There might be focus present in CNS and there might be focus present in CVS. So any system may technically be involved. So the investigations or the blood samples, the investigations that are to be done are 
complete blood count, CRP, or nowadays you can go towards that investigation, which is procalcitonin. Blood CS is to be immediately taken before instituting the therapy. The sample is to be taken, but the uh, you know the growth is not awaited before starting empirical therapy because again it is an emergency. Urine routine microscopy and urine culture microscopy is also done from midstream catch urine. And if you suspect that there is CNS involvement, then you may go for CSF. If you suspect that there is some respiratory involvement, you may go for chest X-ray. So all these investigations, these investigations are the first tier investigation and are to be done in each and every patient of febrile neutropenia. Again, if you have a focus, you can go on added investigation, but these investigations are to be done in each and every patient of febrile neutropenia. Now, once you have taken the sample, what is the management? Now, management is broad spectrum antibiotic. Broad spectrum IV antibiotic is to be given. Broad spectrum IV antibiotics like piperacillin, tazobactam, or cefepine, fifth generation, fourth generation cephalosporin, cefepine. Or you can go for carbapenem. Addition of, you know, vancomycin is warranted if you are suspecting the presence of MRSA. So you can give vancomycin if you are suspecting MRSA, but usually the cause of uh, febrile neutropenia and the sepsis in pediatric population is gram-negative bacilli. Gram-negative bacilli is the common cause. And, uh, you know, here you, if, uh, it is this piperacillin, tazobactam and meropenem, everything is enough. And usually there is, you know, recovery, fast recovery with the usage of the uh, antibiotics that are stated over here. Now, this febrile neutropenia, there, are, there is an algorithm that you can, uh, you know, follow in patients of febrile neutropenia. So, monitoring the patient is important. And once you have started, uh, you know, antibiotics, you have to check for fever monitoring. You have to check for neutropenia resolution. And the infection that you have noticed that again, if, you know, yeah, there is a UTI. So, you monitor the pus cells in the urine. You see all that. And you have to see that if the child is febrile after 48 hours, and you have to see if the child is afebrile after 48 hours. So, ideally, what does this signify if there is a presence of, uh, you know, improvement to therapy or if there is no improvement to therapy? So, ideally, what we do is that we add anti-staphylococcal vancomycin empirically with, uh, you know, the broad spectrum because here we might, if, if we have suspected MRSA, then we have already added vancomycin, but if we have not, then this is the stage where you have to give vancomycin to each and every patient. Again, check for five, five days for the response, febrile after, after three to four days. Again, if it is present, then you have to start antifungal therapy. Antifungal therapy. Now, uh, if the child has become afebrile after 48 hours, you have to see the ANC level. If the ANC level has become more than 500 or if the ANC has become less than 500 or it is still less than 500. And then we will do the risk stratification. We will see the risk factors which help you, us to uh, stratify the risk. So, if it is a child, a child is low risk or the child is high risk. They are also low risk, high risk. Okay, now if the child is low risk, you stop the therapy, you can stop the therapy and if the child is high risk, give oral antibiotics for 7 days. Again, if ANC is less than 500 but low risk, you give oral antibiotics for 7 days and if it is high risk, then give oral antibiotics for 14 days. So, this is the management algorithm of febrile neutropenia. Now, for risk stratification, what are the high risk factors or the danger signs that we are talking of in this algorithm. Okay, so one is high-grade fever 
or there was fever of very very high grade initially only 39 more than 39 degree celsius that turns out to be around 102 degree fahrenheit there was presence of hypotension at any point so means cv involvement anc had fallen at any point less than 100 per millimeter cube or if there was neutropenia for more than 7 days so Actually, this is prolonged or profound or CV involvement. If it is there, that we say that it is high risk febrile neutropenia, and that is the treatment you may give to the patient. Now, uh, what are the other advice that you will give the patient? Hand washing is very important, strict hand washing. And GCSF, fill gastrim, may also be given. Fill gastrin may also be given 5 mg per kg per day to help recover the granulocytes and that is important. Cotrimoxazole may be given if you are suspecting pneumocystis pneumonia in the patient and if you are not suspecting pneumocystis pneumonia then uh, uh, you know you can avoid cotrimoxazole but for Pneumocystis pneumonia, you have to give cotrimoxazole. What else therapy you can give? You can give transfusion to the patient. Transfusion, if the HB is less than 8 gram per deciliter, you have to give HB if less than 8 gram per deciliter or platelet less than 30,000 if they falls. Then you have to give the patient, uh, you know, the blood transfusion but this should be again given with aseptic measures and central line associated blood stream infection that is also known as clepsy that should be taken care of because the more the central lines you put or more iv lines you put the higher chances of sepsis is there in the patient if dic develops in the patient you have to be very careful because once dic develops multi-system involvement starts to occur and that is very 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 difficult to control uh, that's all for today, guys. I hope you remember this and I will see you in the next one.